Hi, my name is Dr. Leela Landowski, and today we are talking about the anatomy of the neuron. All right, so essentially neurons are cells that are transmitting information either to and from the outside world or your inside world. Um, they're a body's communication system and they have lots of different shapes. A lot of cells in the body have quite a regular consistent shape, but neurons don't. Um, they're shapes are pretty much specialized depending on what kind of signal they're trying to send. Uh, some might only be dealing with motor information, others might be dealing with just pain or just sound or just shape or color. Uh, and this leads to different shapes depending on the function of that particular neuron. So the neuron's made up of lots of different parts. The main part here is what we call the cell body. So the cell body houses all of the basic building blocks that allows this neuron to function. It contains the nucleus, which contains the DNA, and it comes, contains the other cellular machinery that creates proteins to allow this neuron to have its shape and its function. Um, it creates uh, neurotransmitters and so forth, which then allow this neuron to signal from one cell to another. So all of that is happening within the cell body. All of those um, proteins are being generated right there. We know that the cell body is obviously doing all this busy stuff. So if you have damage to the, to the cell body, um, then the neuron is basically going to die. It can't really recover from that kind of an injury. But theoretically, if you have injury a little bit further down or to one of these distal parts, of the neuron, there is often potential for that neuron to regenerate or to recover from that injury. But injury to the cell body is pretty serious. So the next thing is the dendrites. The dendrites are these little bushy tree-like structures that we can see protruding out here from the cell body. Um, and they are basically collecting and receiving information from other neurons. So their job is to receive signals. It is important to mention that the cell body also receives signals from other neurons, but dendrites, um, you know, they can be a couple of millimeters long, so they allow you to collect um, signals from neurons that are, are a little bit further away. So we've got this signal from another cell, which is either traveling down the dendrite or from the cell body, and it starts to converge at this point here called the axon hillock. So the axon hillock is basically um, this special part of the cell body which connects to the axon. So um, this is the point which generates this action potential, this electrical signal, which then travels down the axon. So we have the electrical signal um, basically being generated at this point, and it's an all or nothing thing. You either have the axon potential or you don't. Um, it's a bit like firing a gun. When you pull the trigger, you either have a bullet come out or you don't. So it's an all or nothing thing. You don't have little action potentials and big ones, you just have action potentials. So this action potential will generate be generated here and it'll travel all the way down the axon. Now you might notice here on the axon that there are these blue regions. So interestingly, the brain is made out of about 80% fat. And it's not your regular kind of fat and there definitely aren't any fat cells in the brain so where is this fat coming from so this fat is actually what we call myelin so the cells in the in the nervous system either oligodendrocytes in the central nervous system or schwann cells in the peripheral nervous system are responsible for making myelin so they really wrap themselves around this axon very very tightly and if you think about what um, a cell is surrounded by, or the, the plasma membrane of a cell is, surround, is made of, it's phospholipid. So it's basically lots and lots of really tight layers of phospholipid. Phospholipid is a type of fat. So you can see where all this fat comes from. So this myelin, this fatty myelin sheath, is actually insulating this axon and it's allowing the axon to be able to transmit that signal, that action potential, faster and more effectively. The next part is the axon terminal. So the signal travels all the way down the axon and ends at what we call um, these axon terminals. So the axon terminals contain um, these little tiny synaptic vesicles, which are basically little sacs 
full of neurotransmitter which um, are then released and that forms a signal which the target cell can then respond to. So just to wrap up, we know that information um, is passed through a neuron in a really clear, well-established process. So the dendrites receive information or even the cell body can receive information um, or, or a signal. That um, signal converges here at the axon hillock and either an action potential is generated or it doesn't. So say we've got an action potential generated and it travels all the way down this axon to the axon terminals where the axon terminals release neurotransmitter which then provides an instruction for the next cell. So um, basically every time a neuron is being activated it's producing electricity. In fact our bodies produce enough electricity to, to light up a light bulb so they're pretty busy. So this is your summary of the anatomy of a neuron and we'll talk again soon.